Hello, this is Jalir Sandoval, and it's a pleasure to record this talk uh, entitled Algorithm for Evaluation of the Minoka Patient for Cardiovascular Innovations Digital 2020. I have no financial disclosures. What is Minoka? Minoka is myocardial infarction in the absence of obstructive coronary artery disease. This is an entity for which uh, particular uh, attention uh, has been raised over the past few years with a scientific statement coming from AHA in 2019 that followed a uh, working group position paper from ESC in 2017 and also received attention in the latest 2018 universal definition of myocardial infarction. Uh, in general, it's diagnosed as uh, for patients that meet the universal definition of my criteria. In other words, they have a rising or falling pattern in cardiac troponin T concentrations with one value above the 99th percentile uh, with evidence of acute myocardial ischemia, either in ECG or imaging, um, that when they undergo coronary angiography, they have no presence of significant obstructive coronary artery disease, which in general is defined as less than 50%. <clears throat> uh, defined in such matter, in general, it is identified in five to 10% of MI cases, uh, and this is what we will be discussing today. Uh, as alluded for, uh, as alluded, this the, uh, condition occurs in five to ten percent of cases. This is one particular study that supports that. This is from Sweetheart, uh, in which uh, in their database uh, they identified that Minoka uh, occurred in eight point four percent of patients, and when they categorized patients according to the universal definition of MI that underwent coronary angiography. They identified that the vast majority of Minoka cases as shown here were type 1 Minoka, which were 2,912 cases, as compared to 621 patients with type 2 myocardial, myocardial infarction. Uh, this slide also illustrates how Minoka does not refer to one particular disease process, but rather it's a heterogeneous entity um, that entails both type one and type two myocardial infarction mechanisms. Uh, as alluded, uh, Minoka is a heterogeneous entity of, of both coronary and non-coronary uh, triggers. Uh, it can be caused often by type one atherothrombotic uh, uh, etiologies, which can be ruptured plaque or erosions. Uh, but certainly there's a number of non-atherothrombotic coronary mechanisms, such as basospasm, spontaneous coronary artery dissection, microvascular dis dis dysfunction, and in situ thrombosis or coronary thromboembolism that can lead to minoca. Uh, further, there are non-coronary mechanisms that can lead to type two supply demand myocardial uh, infarction, and thus those can be anemia, hyperhypertension, uh, respiratory failure, and tachyobrady dysrhythmias. <clears throat> Importantly, there is some discrepancy in the Minoka literature in which often some conditions such as my myocarditis and tachotubo uh, are <clears throat> phrased uh, as being under the Minoka realm, but in general, these are not consistent with acute myocardial infarction. And the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction, where this uh, extract it uh, comes from, uh, clearly delineates that myocardial these and Tacotuva syndromes are best referred to as patients that have myocardial injury, not a myocardial infarction. <clears throat> So how do we evaluate patients that have Minoka? This is the proposed Minoka algorithm. So if you have a patient that has suspected acute coronary syndrome and then they go coronary geography, your first step, of course, would be to exclude severe coronary artery disease um, that is clearly anatomically severe or that physiologic or is physiologically proven to be uh, flow limiting. And best, those patients would be treated uh, following the usual guidelines. But it is for those patients that have concern for acute myocardial infarction that in coronary angiography does not demonstrate any clear or overt obstructive coronary disease, then we would have to uh, think about the following steps. The first step is careful angiographic evaluation. Uh, and why do we say that? Because often the term Minoka is applied to patients that when uh, they are carefully evaluated angiographically, there, um, there is uh, clear uh, disease uh, or other etiologies that were identified. Here's one such example, patient with uh, suspected ACS that was referred to the cardiac catheterization laboratory that on coronary angiography, it appeared to be no definite lesion except for this uh, OM1 uh, uh, 
uh, lesion that was thought to be indeterminate and assessed using IFR when that resulted in a normal value of 1.0. At this particular point, uh, no definite culprit lesion was thought to be identified and given the normal coronary physiology, an initial um, uh, conservative approach was uh, preferred. However, the patient can persisted uh, with um, chest discomfort and was uh, brought back to the cardiac catheterization laboratory. And now on repeat coronary angiography, it was clearly identified that it was a posterior branch of that uh, obtuse marginal that was uh, occluded consistent with a type one uh, occlusive uh, myocardial infarction that underwent successful revascularization as shown here in the right. So again, just an example of how sometimes we may think that um, patients have minoca but on careful angiographic evaluation or, or further study, it may be identified that these patients actually have uh, occlusive coronary artery disease. <clears throat> this is another case of an inferior acid elevation myocardial infarction in which the right coronary artery did not demonstrate any overt obstructive uh, disease. Uh, <clears throat> some concern for some possible plaque, but there was a dampening upon engagement that got worse as the case proceeded. And a subsequent administration of nitroglycerin, it was demonstrated that there was a clear component of spasm and that and therefore this was a case of coronary vasospasm that was actually consistent with a case of minoca. <clears throat> If the following has been performed and still there's no uh, clear etiology, we must not forget that the left ventricle left ventriculography can assist with diagnosis. There may be clear patterns such as the Kurtzuvo or uh, identification of regional wall motion abnormalities that may assist with uh, diagnosis that may provide value. This is another case of a patient with suspected ACS that was referred to the lab, had normal arteries. And again, a left ventriculography, uh, there was a clear pattern consistent with uh, Takotsuva syndrome. So we must not forget that uh, left ventriculography uh, done with a pigtail catheter uh, can certainly provide um, uh, uh, important information that can assist with diagnosis. What if there's equivocal lesions? There may be patients that may have some haziness, some indeterminate severity, and it is in these patients that, of course, intracoronary imaging and coronary physiology have, have, uh, have value. This is one case of IVUS, uh, nicely um, presented by Smilowitz and colleagues at acc.org, of a patient in which there was concern for ACS, uh, potentially involving the anterior wall, but on coronary angiography, there was no clear angiographic lesion. Uh, however, given the high predisposability probability and concern, the patient underwent further into interrogation with intravascular ultrasound that showed a clear rupture plaque in the proximal LAD as confirmed uh, with advanced imaging on cardiac MRI, uh, confirming the case of a type one uh, myocardial infarction with no obstructive coronary disease minoca and was treated accordingly. <clears throat> this is one other case uh, now using OCT of a patient that also had suspected ACS underwent coronary angiography that demonstrated no uh, overt obstructive disease except for this indeterminate um, uh, moderate disease in the RC that was further evaluated using OCT that demonstrated a clear uh, rupture plaque um, in the RCA <clears throat> that was subsequently uh, treated. Um, so again, intracoronary imaging can assist with diagnosis. If, if, if the if the previous steps have been performed and there's still um, diagnostic uncertainty, uh, we must not forget that there is clear value in advanced imaging. Uh, there are a number of other conditions that remain part of the differential diagnosis. Uh, CT may be helpful as patients can. Uh, there are mimickers such as pulmonary embolism uh, um, that can cause a myocardial injury and ECG changes. So that may help with diagnosis. Echocardiography uh, may help us. There might be patterns such as stacotsuvo as well as pericardial effusions and pericarditis that can sometimes uh, be also mimickers. And MRI can also help with the diagnosis of myocarditis. And certainly, MRI may also confer small acute infarcts. Here's one such case, patient with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, not an anticoagulation that had clear ischemic sound and chest discomfort or with rising cardiac troponin T concentrations. The, as, and had an echocardiogram that had a normal ejection fraction with no wall motion abnormalities. Uh, coronary angiography was performed and showed uh, uh, 
pretty normal coronary eyes with no definite culprit. Uh, but given the concern for the symptoms and his presentation, rising cardiac troponin concentrations, further evaluation was performed using cardiac MRI. And, and this confirmed a clear small focus of subendocardial delayed enhancement um, consistent uh, uh, clinically with a small embolic uh, infarct. And again, a case that clearly confirmed uh, MINOCA uh, without obstructive coronary artery disease. <clears throat> And of course, one other uh, uh, tool that is available for us in the cardiac catheterization laboratory is this, all the other steps have been performed and there is no clear diagnosis after careful angiographic evaluation, left ventriculography, and using of intracoronary imaging if needed, as well as advanced imaging. There is a subset of patients that is at risk for having microvascular dysfunction. And it is in those patients that it is advocated to consider for a functional angiogram protocol um, uh, to determine whether there's the presence of endothelial dysfunction with provocative testing um, and, and, for, and then tailored treatment uh, accordingly subsequently. So, Take on points, number one, in patients with ischemia and an arm infarction, the absence of obstructive coronary disease should, should not lead to dismissal, but rather to the interrogation of potential causes of myocardial injury, in particular, if it will lead to actionable measures that modify outcomes. Two, intracoronary imaging using IVIS or OCT can facilitate diagnosis. Three, for those who have an uncertain diagnosis following comprehensive evaluation, there can be selective consideration for functional angiogram protocol for microvascular dysfunction. And last, we must not forget that there's a role for advanced imaging, particularly using cardiac MRI to establish diag other diagnosis, including missing small infarcts or non-minocal causes such as myocarditis. Uh, thank you very much.